America awaits you along the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Tour a Civil War battlefield. Share the hospitality of the Deep South. Experience the tranquility of a more leisurely lifestyle. Come closer to the legends of the river. Around every scenic bend, you will find the history and legacy of our nation when you take our voyage through America. they plied the rivers of America. The J.M. White, the Belle of Memphis, the Natchez, the Robert E. Lee. These waterborne wonders were lavish, luxurious, floating palaces steeped with the elegance of a golden age. Following the tradition of this bygone era is the largest steamboat ever built, the Mississippi Queen. Never has there been such a stern wheeler. She has all the luxury of a floating palace and the amenities of a 20th century cruise ship. She and her sister ship, the Delta Queen, are America's last overnight steamboats. Built in 1926, the Delta Queen first steamed between San Francisco and Sacramento. She was brought to New Orleans in 1946 and became the most elegant steamboat to ever carry passengers on the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Today, the Delta Queen is carefully preserved, the last remaining tie to the golden era of steamboat. Come aboard the Ohio Valley Voyager as the Delta Queen makes one of its frequent mid-year cruises between St. Louis and Cincinnati. It's a five-day, 640-mile trip down the Mississippi and up the Ohio. It's not long before you know your fellow passengers and the all-American crew. Chief Purser Henry Mitchell explains. Well, we have more of a family atmosphere on board, and uh, the passengers can enjoy the wood, the slowness of it, the relaxation, and seeing the small towns along the river. You know, you get in the outside world, you go on an expressway, you're doing 55 miles an hour. Everything is rush, rush, and come on here, you're down to five miles going against the current. Maybe we'll do 15 going with the current, but everything slows down. <laughs> It becomes more of a family. It becomes more of doing things with people. You begin to see people on a regular basis, and they make friends. Oh. It's just wonderful. And the nice part is that you have scenery on both sides. You're not out in the middle of the ocean where once in a while you have a little land. And uh, it reminds me of my youth <laughs> when I lived in a small town. I'm learning more about American history, something I wasn't that interested in until I came on this cruise, and I'm really involved in it now. If you're looking for history, it's well preserved in the towns and cities that line the banks of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. New Harmony, Indiana was settled in 1814 by the pious followers of George Rapp. In a country that had seen nothing more sophisticated than a log cabin, the skills of these German immigrants amazed neighboring pioneers. After 11 years, the Harmonists left. 
This labyrinth stands as a symbol of their difficult approach to the state of true harmony. One hundred and eighty-eight miles and three locks later, the Delta Queen arrives in Louisville, home of beautiful women, excellent bourbon, and fast horses. A visit to this city isn't complete without seeing Churchill Downs, home of the Kentucky Derby, or a stop at one of the many horse farms. But perhaps the best tour is on board, where you can see how she works. The engine here is the, is the original steam engine that was uh, built in 1925. And then uh, you have the pitman arm here connecting to the paddle wheel, which weighs uh, approximately 10 tons. into history. The boat is something that doesn't exist anymore on the river except on the Delta Queen. In true steamboat tradition, the Calliope heralds the arrival of the Delta Queen to Cincinnati, Ohio, her home port. Old Man River from Mississippi the soul of America. Mark Twain knew it well and called it the crookedest river in the world. Draining water from more than one half of the 48 conterminous states, this great stream begins at Lake Itasca, Minnesota, and flows 2,348 miles to the Gulf of Mexico. 1,850 miles of this scenic waterway can be experienced from the decks of the Mississippi Queen as she cruises between the Twin Cities and New Orleans on one of her great Mississippi expeditions. Minneapolis and St. Paul, the Twin Cities, are the northernmost point of navigation on the Mississippi. St. Paul grew up around its steamboat landing. Mississippi Queen is departing St. Paul for St. Louis. The most picturesque figure on a stern wheeler was undoubtedly the captain, a tough-minded, unpolished, hard-bitten character who was the idol of every boy who's read Mark Twain. I consider myself one of the fortunate individuals to be able to do something as a career that I really dreamed of ever since I was a kid. But actually, it was the steam calliope that brought me to the river. Okay, well, this one on here is supposed to be not only the world's biggest, but the world's loudest. And you can probably hear this calliope four or five miles away. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a try here. Here goes. <laughs> I meet people at a happy time. They're on vacation, they're out to have a good time, they're on the riverboat relaxing. And I like to think of the Mississippi Queen as my home and all the passengers coming aboard the boat visiting me. We want to entertain these passengers. They're on here to have a good time, and we want to make them feel at home. The food has been superb. Uh, we've made a, some Atlantic crossings, and the food there really wasn't up to the level that they've had here. Smoked salmon with capers, crepe de pinard, steamboat beef burgundy, cabernet sauvignon, sauce bernays, New Orleans barbecued shrimp, filet mignon. Cuisine fit for a king or two. While waiting for your evening meal, you can relax in one of the comfortable lounges. We're coming your drink, sir. Or sit back on the veranda of your stateroom and watch the river pass by. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is indeed Bodine, Bodine Jackson Belasco. 
And I am the real thing. I am the genuine article. I am the last of the Mississippi Riverboat Gamblers. Now, we're going to do... If anyone can prove why you shouldn't play cards with strangers, it's Bodine Jackson Belasco, last and greatest of the Riverboat Gamblers. ...are the aces. And so I see if I can uh, extricate them without uh, too much trouble expeditiously from their various portions in the middle of the deck. See your mama every night. Oh, you won't see mama at all. The showboat is still alive on the old Mississippi. Nightly entertainment reflects the golden days of steamboat. In my alcove, will you bring the cord? I have got the stove. You see your mama every night. Oh, you won't see mama at all. Oh, no. You won't see mama at all. This is the greatest Dixieland I have heard in years and years and years. The singers are great. I just, I'm just wrapped up in the whole thing. Something's always happening on the Mississippi Queen, but there's plenty of time and space to slow down and enjoy the peaceful rhythms of life on board. We've been to the Orient, we've been to the Hawaiian Islands a number of times, and this is a, probably a more relaxed uh, kind of a cruise uh, and vacation than we've ever had before. Only from a riverboat making way midstream can the traveler fill that romantic longing of floating on the Mississippi. Sam Clemens understood the lure of the river and captured it in two timeless characters, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Writing under the pen name of Mark Twain, Sam Clemens was to recall his early life in Hannibal by molding the very real people of that day into his famous novels. It was from here that he, as a boy, was lured by the river to St. Louis, the gateway to the West. New Orleans, founded by the French in 1718, is the jumping off place for late fall or early spring Dixieland cruising. On board either the Mississippi Queen or Delta Queen, you will experience the warm cordiality of the Deep South. Baton Rouge, Natchez, San Francisco Plantation, St. Francisville, Kumas House, Vicksburg. All will become familiar places as you cruise the lower Mississippi. Hello, where are you from? Connecticut. Welcome to the Deep South. Welcome to Homer's house. Before the Civil War, one half of America's millionaires lived in this rich and fertile valley. Nowhere was the opulence more apparent than here at Rosedown, built in 1835 by a wealthy cotton planter. Once known as the most wicked hellhole in the Western world, Natchez Under the Hill served riverboat men faithfully until she dried up in the early 1800s. On top of the hill, things were quite different. Natchez boasts of having 100 antebellum homes. Most restored and open to the public are filled with treasures of old plantation owners who traded cotton for the finery of Europe. Wealthy and cultured, Dr. Haller Nutt's goal was to erect a truly different style of home. Villa Longwood, an edifice of comfort and convenience, lies unfinished, a victim of the Civil War. The Vicksburg National Military Park is the site of one of the best-known battles of the Civil War. 
It was here 10,000 Confederate troops fought to hold the Gibraltar of the Mississippi in an agonizing 47-day siege. By July 4, 1863, Vicksburg was lost. The Confederacy may not have known they were beaten, but the folks along the river sure did. As Abraham Lincoln said, the father of waters again flows unvexed to the sea. And it still does for steamboats. cruises on other cruise ships and this is just so much fun and it's just a delightful way to spend seven lovely days this has been the most fun i've had in years and i'll do it again i love it no one leaves the legendary delta queen or the majestic mississippi queen without feeling they have been part of an event part of a voyage through america